Hi guys and welcome back to Clearview Driving. My name is Amin and today I'm doing a mock test for Malik. Now Malik has done four driving tests in the past and unfortunately he failed. This is his third lesson with me. Previously he's been learning to drive with his parents so he's never really driven with an instructor before this. And yeah, so before we get started um, I'm going to take you a little bit about the test. So throughout the drive I want you to follow the road ahead. Whenever I need you to turn, I will tell you in plenty of time. If I don't say anything, keep going straight. If you're not sure where you're going, you can ask. I'm going to get you to carry out one manoeuvre and we may also carry out the emergency stop. Okay. Now I'm going to get you to follow the sat-nav for about 20 minutes or so and then I'll give you normal directions afterwards. Okay. Now before we get started, could you tell me, how would you check if your power assist steering is working or not? How would you check if there was a problem with your power assist steering? So I would do this by spinning the wheel around, when I turn on the car by spinning it around, okay. once it's been turned on. If it's specifically difficult, then I would need to get it checked with the mechanic, but okay. if it does spin relatively, you know, as, 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 a, as per my experience, it should be fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so whenever you're ready. Right. Okay, so whenever you're ready, let's drive off. So what I'd like you to do now is to reverse back for about two car lengths, keeping reasonably close to and parallel with the pavement as you carry out the exercise. For about two car lengths, yeah. Malik reverses back really slowly, looking over his left and right blind spot, making sure there are no vehicles or pedestrians around him. Thank you. I'll move in front of you, really. When moving off from the right hand side of the road, you should start from your right blind spot and finish checking over into your left blind spot into the road to make sure it's clear. Malik has a habit of keeping his left foot hovering over the clutch even when he's not using it. 
This results in him coasting on a lot of the stop as he puts the clutch down first whenever he needs to slow down. This isn't good for your control whenever you need to stop the car. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Then, at the end of the road, turn left. Approaching meeting traffic on this road, Malik keeps his position fairly centre of the road. He should have moved a little bit towards the left to make it easier for the vehicles in front to get through. Approach of this right turn at the mini roundabout. Malik doesn't signal until he gets to the very top of the roundabout. Now this would be a serious fault as nobody ahead knows that he's turning right. Have you ready?
Malik hesitates to move off from this parked position. There's no vehicles behind him, he's simply waiting for the vehicles oncoming to pass. But there's enough space in front of him to move off. The vehicle in front is trying to reverse park into a space on their side of the road. Malik gets really close and stops right in front of them. He should have stopped in the position on the left hand side of the road, allowing enough space for anyone to come through the middle if anyone was stuck behind them. When waiting for someone you should always wait on the left hand side of the road making sure the right hand side is clear for any oncoming vehicles. As the vehicle finishes parking, Malik should have moved through the middle of the road and moved up to the end of the road. He carried on waiting, resulting in a meeting situation with the oncoming vehicles. We're doing a right turn, just ignore the sat-nav, sorry. It goes a bit funny at this point. Malik should have moved into the space on the left or carried on through the road at this point. Malik, you should... Sorry. Whatever you think is safe at this point. The silver car in front was actually waiting for Malik to move into the space on the left hand side ahead of the black vehicle. Malik should have kept both hands on the steering wheel to make it easier to steer the wheel whilst reversing and looking over both right and left blind spot. He neglected his right blind spot while reversing. right at the end of the road, okay? While waiting at junctions with a gradient, make sure there are no pedestrians crossing behind you whilst you're trying to move off. Malik rolled back at this point. The vehicles on the right were piling up as they were turning into the road where we were waiting. Malik should have used this as a gap to go forward slowly, and once you're out halfway, it's easier to get into the new road. When there were no vehicles on the road approaching from the right, Malik should have used clutch control to slowly peep and creep to get a better view of the road on the right. Malik needs to start moving forward slowly as the traffic is piling up on the road on the right and behind us. Malik, you need to move slowly forward when nobody's there, otherwise you're not going to be able to see any better, okay? Got it. I'd like you to demonstrate how you 
switch on the front demister. Satnav it says we're going to be making a right turn in 700 yards. Malik moves into the overtaking lane. Now he should have stayed in the overtaking lane as he's making a right turn soon. He starts using his mirrors to move back into the left hand lane. Now this would go down as awareness and planning as he doesn't need to be in the left hand lane. Approach to this roundabout to turn right third exit, Malik should have been in the far right lane. He gets into the middle lane, which is actually the third lane. Now this lane is only used to go straight ahead. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. As he goes into the roundabout, he realises that his lane does not turn right, so he stays in this lane and takes the second exit. Now this would not be counted as a serious fault in the test, as he's not doing anything wrong. He simply went the wrong way. Take the exit, A312. So we're just headed off in the wrong direction at the moment. I'm just going to give you directions from here on. Just ignore the sat for now. Turn left, then turn around when possible. When you turn get to the traffic lights, possible, turn right. Then, at the end of the road, turn Just right. Ignore the sat nav for now, okay? For turning right at these traffic lights, Malik should have been signalling. As pedestrians that are crossing the road on the right or left, do not realise that he can only go right from this position. So even though it's a compulsory right turn, it's always a good idea to use the indicator. to this right turn of the traffic light, Malik should have used his mirrors towards the right and signalled on approach to the traffic lights. Gonna be ready. When moving off from this position, Malik forgets to put it into first gear and looks for a safe gap. 
when he realises he does change gear but he forgets to now look over his right blind spot again. You should always check your right blind spot as the last check before moving away. approaches the roundabout really well, starting from the left and then going into the middle lane to follow the road ahead. Malik waits for a safe gap before entering the roundabout, but as he enters the roundabout, he straight lines the roundabout and getting into the path of the vehicle on his right. of this roundabout, Malik should have slowed down selecting second gear and looking on approach as it's a very open junction. He also forgets to signal. Approach to the traffic lights to turn right, there are two lanes turning right. Malik should have gone in the first of the two lanes as that's the position normal driving. On approach to the stop, Malik should have braked for a little bit longer before putting the clutch down. He ends up stopping in the cycle box. This was a result because of the coasting on approach to the stop. Putting the clutch down early is not good for control. As Malik turns right at the traffic lights from the overtaking position, he stays in the right hand lane as he turns into the new road. As the lanes merge in the new road, this would not be counted as a minor or a serious fault.
road on the left, please. It's just after the last park car. It was okay. I did have some challenges. I didn't go onto the right lane when you wanted the roundabout, mm -hmm. but I didn't panic either. So I went round the and I followed the road. Mm -hmm. No, you did well on that one. You went you, know, you went the wrong way, but that was fine. But there are a few serious faults and a dangerous fault is also. Okay, so I'm going to go through them to help you sort of understand this. Firstly, the first fault that I've got down is um, the most important one. There were so many occasions when you did not signal. I felt that, yeah. Yeah, especially on roundabouts. There was a roundabout left turn. There was two roundabouts where we turned right, one of which you signalled once you got there. Yeah. Like, as you started the turn, which was actually way too late. So that would be a serious fault. The other one was um, just at the end here now, that SO roundabout. We're turning right and again, no signal right on approach. You've gone into the roundabout and you've signalled left to exit. But how does anybody know you're you're going to be making a right turn? Okay, so there's a lot of um, signals missing. Then there was that right turn that we were sort of stuck at for a while. Yeah. Okay. Now with that particular right turn, when we first got there, there was a bit of a situation where the car was trying to park. Now you should have stopped in a position where you're on your side of the road, so that if he doesn't park, firstly give him, give him a bit more space. Stop about two car lengths in advance. And then once he gets out of the way, if somebody had been stuck behind him, they can get through. You sort of stopped in the middle. Yeah. Then when he did park and he was out of your path, you just sat there. Yeah. He, he was out of your way. There was enough space for you to get through. But then you didn't get through. Now the next car turned up. That made the whole situation a lot worse. Yeah. The By the time, yeah, you the then had to reverse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now with the reversing, I don't know why, but you're putting your arm at the back of my seat and trying to look this way. Now with that, you're restricting yourself from that view on the back right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's loads of nice windows in this car and you can use your, cat or your mirrors as well. So you've got to make sure you have a good look around and keep reversing and keep looking around in your mirrors and your blind spots. But you've got to be able to turn the wheel also because you can't turn with one hand on the steering, can you? No. Yeah, so you had a bit of trouble with the reversing part. And then eventually when we got to the end of that road, there was a bit of a pile up on the right. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. big Range Rover was blocking your view. Now you could see behind her, there was a few cars and they were waiting at first. You should have gone forward, yeah. but you carried on waiting. So you hesitated there. Now, by the time you got to the end, now you're right next to this car and you, you can't see anything to the right. There was intermittent traffic. What you needed to do was move forward slowly when there was nobody and keep focusing your attention on the right side because that's where cars were coming out first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that right turn was a little, a little bit too messy. Mm -hmm. And then we had that um, second exit straight ahead at Willow Tree, where you had to wait a little while before we could yeah, get yeah, in. Yeah. As you went into the roundabout, you've straight lined that roundabout. Yeah, instead of jump, jumping to the, yep. Yeah, so you've gone into the roundabout straight as opposed to your lane, which was over across to the left. Yeah. Now we've practiced that roundabout, so I was expecting you to definitely know that one. Yeah. Okay, but we only ended up there because you went the wrong way. Um, then of course there's a bit of a steering one. Now this one is more of an advisory serious than, than an actual serious, but it definitely would have been a fault. I asked you to park up on the left mm -hmm. and you uh, bumped into the pavement there and scratched the alloy, so that wasn't very nice. Yeah. When parking, just gradually come into this position. Use whatever's in front of you to um, know when you're in a nice straight line, but also use the red sticker mark at the front. Get the pavement roughly in the middle of the windscreen. And then once you're here, you can use the left mirror to see the space, but don't use the left mirror to close the gap. Got it. Okay. Um, then it was moving off safety. When you're moving off from a parked position, you're not checking your blind spot enough. When I asked you to reverse on the right, the manoeuvre, mm -hmm. the manoeuvre itself was really nice. But when you moved off from that position, you didn't check your left blind spot. 
you did use your mirrors in in front and so on but by the time you're actually moving there's no left mirror uh, left blind spot check okay then there's that response to uh, road marking when we stopped in the cycle box yes i, I recognize that one straight away yeah. bit of now i feel like with that particular one and a few of your stops and your, your approach to roundabouts and stuff you have a habit of coasting what's coasting is it stopping early or like being a bit putting the clutch down first thing you, sometimes you've been at 20 miles per hour and you have to stop by the end and the first thing you're doing is getting the clutch down now with that what happens when you coast it, it doesn't stop properly it's yeah about... the car actually speeds up so on that particular occasion where you stopped in the crossing again the same thing because you've got the clutch down first you ended up stopping in the uh, crossing there in the cycle box sorry but you've got to make sure every time that you um slow down you you slow the car down with the brake then use the clutch when you need to you keep putting the clutch down straight away mm -hmm. and the other thing so that i've got a minor fault for awareness and planning this was when you were driving in the overtaking lane on the dual carriageway yep and the sat nav actually had a right turn um indicator on and you kept trying to move into the left lane yeah yeah I, yeah i, I need to the, the sat nav I, I want to jump in the left lane but then as it gradually went forward i i, I recognized that there was no point and we were getting... yeah so at the time that you were trying to move into the left lane um it said six seven hundred yards now i know that's quite a while but you're, you're on a dual carriageway it's a 40 miles per hour road everyone's driving at that speed just get to it plus you're turning it doesn't make sense to be on the left then to come back again <laughs> yeah got yeah? it you're just making it harder for yourself there got it okay got okay. it so the biggest issue you're saying is signals yeah. on round the back was in, there was a right turn that we did as well traffic light right turn where you completely approached in the right hand lane no signal as you've gone into the junction you've then signaled i know the one you're talking about that i was i wasn't sure in a road which essentially led, led to the right okay there were, there were two right turns on traffic lights which you should have signaled on yeah so even if it's a compulsory right turn pedestrians do they realize that you're gonna go that way not always no no because it's, it's, it's only when you drive especially know the area you know when a certain car is going to turn a certain way yeah but if you so, don't obviously you wouldn't know that's it got it okay fantastic so that's something i'm gonna need to keep in mind okay okay there's so no harm in putting that signal on even if it wasn't necessary right yeah yeah, yeah. same with uh miranda bats i think i need to be you know get that balance right mm. okay got it fantastic yeah, thank you okay all right, so that's the end of our mock test today. I hope you guys find this information useful. And yeah, he did make a lot of mistakes, but it's something that we need to go and work on now, right? Absolutely. Okay, so hopefully you don't you don't go ahead and make the same mistakes that Malik did. <laughs> <laughs>